Hello. Apologies for the delay. Hi, everybody. Hello. Nice to see everybody. My apologies for the delay. My God, I'm really turned around with something technology-wise, but here we are. So let's do some yoga without any further ado. Good morning, everyone. Um, great to be with you all. And such a highlight of my week to practice yoga with you. Um, quick housekeeping announcements would be to consider getting props. Um, I'm going to create an Amazon affiliate link um, where you can see items that I would recommend to people. Um, and so that, that's an option. And um, you should also know that we'll be opening up a Friday class soon. Um, in addition to this Tuesday class and the Thursday Dream Yoga class at 5 p.m., we're going to open up a Friday class. And yeah, so without further ado, let's dive in. Um, also, we have t-shirts. We have t-shirts available, um, kind of like this, but with branding and cute mantras and images. Hi, Eli. Eli says, hello. Um, can people take a minute and chat into the box? Um, any dreams or symptoms? or um, thoughts, feelings that you're working with at the start of today's practice. As you know, one of the things I like to do is integrate that a little bit into the flow, heart pressure. So some one person is feeling some heart pressure and um, Whatever you type, feel free to take one more minute to incorporate whatever you might like to add into today's flow. And if nothing is arising for you to type, that's okay too. Anxiety. filling a dream about filling up a baby bottle. Filling a baby bottle with some milk. Okay. So, taking a moment to be with all of these thoughts and feelings and recognizing them for what they are or recognizing them for however they are manifesting and simply take a breath, take a sip of water. You could consider the sensation that you're working with. You can consider the sensation that you're working with and consider it to be um, a point on the body. And maybe you feel it somewhere near the heart region or in some other region of the body. And you could connect to that sensation as you breathe. Whatever that sensation was that was active for you, simply breathe. And if that sensation had a color, what color would it be? And noticing that you're breathing and noticing that there's a color in mind, perhaps one or maybe two colors. You might allow that sensation of that color to wash over and to simply begin to move around. 
like a mist or a nectar. And with every inhale, deepening into the presence of our physical, mental bodies on the mat. And with every exhale, releasing any inhibitions that we may have from fully enjoying this asana flow. You could consider the color or the aspect of your experience as something neutral. You could consider the color or the sensory aspect of your experience to be positive. Or you could experience it to be cautionary in some way. And if you experience it to be cautionary, you could imagine a different color around you. And you could imagine all of the vitality of that experience as you inhale that deep into the belly and exhale with an audible, closed, slight throat constriction and through the nose for ujjayi breath. Inhaling all the prana around you, all the life force and exhaling through the nose. Following the, your own journey with the Ujjayi Pranayama Ocean Breath. And you might consider specific regions of the body which become more activated as you apply different volume or different pressure to your exhalation through the nose. So maybe you're connecting with the back of the solar plexus, the middle spine, as you breathe. Maybe you sense the lumbar spine, the lower back. Maybe you're really feeling sensation in the sacrum, the bone above the tailbone. And as that slight constriction is allowed, you can simply notice what other impulses arise. So you may find on the inhale that your hands are sweeping up, fingertips towards the sky. And with the Ujjayi exhale, you may find your fingertips wanting to float back down to brush the mat on either side of your body. And as you inhale, the ribs, the ribs could be expanding, front body opening forward. And as you exhale, fluid and continuous arms cascading down as fingertips brush the mat, inhaling, reaching up. You might discover length up and down the spine from tailbone to crown. You might be sitting in some position that feels comfortable for you on a block or on a cushion or in Vajrasana lightning bolt pose as I'm in, supported with one block. And you may notice your chin undulating backwards and forwards with this pattern, inhaling the chin sweeps back, the gaze sweeps back. And on the exhales, you might find the chin sweeping forward, the back body opening, cervical spine opening as you gaze forward and down, fingertips sweep down and then begin sweeping back up. languidly, fluidly, continuously following the impetus of the breath, the impetus of the life force, the impetus of the prana, the same 
aspect that motivated this practice which you may have typed into the chat at the beginning. It's the same thing. It's the same life force energy animating, causing all these physical manifestations in the form of movement. And as you exhale, you next you may find yourself placing the fingertips down and behind and in front of yourself as you invite a gentle spinal twist, inhaling through center. Exhale, placing the fingertips towards 12 o'clock and six o'clock on the floor. Fluidly and continuously, like a jellyfish. Allow this rotation to take place. Breathing across the spine and through all 360 degrees of the ribs, how fluid and connected can you be? How much range of motion might you choose to allow? And as you exhale next, you could invite your palms to come to heart center, Anjani Mudra. And we'll continue with um, one mantra um, from the Amitabha Pure Land um, Buddhist tradition. This land anointed with flower strewn Mount Meru for land, sun, and moon. Imagined as a Buddha land and offer to you. May all beings enjoy this pure land. And Om on the next exhale, if you choose. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace. And again, peace. Rolling down to the mat and flow into our asana and out of our warm-ups. Coming gently down onto the spine, you could begin noticing the impulse for the knees to invite movement back and forth. Spine is long, gently resting on the mat. The sits bones and the tailbones begin shifting and rocking the knees back and forth rocking the knees back and forth to up towards a windshield wiper flow. And the arms could come out to a T or a Y or to some extension. I notice the rapidity of the impulse that is flowing through your body. Notice the vigorousness that is allowing itself to manifest in your movement this morning without judgment notice your impulse and you may choose to then turn your gaze or drishti in sanskrit towards the opposite directionality of your knees so as the knees were to turn to the right you could gaze to the left Inhale, knees and gaze could come to center and exhale again, gaze goes to the right, knees drop down towards the left. And following that impulse for a moment, rooting the shoulder blades down towards the mat. Inhale to reach for the knees. 
and gently rocking the sacrum in a circle. Again, notice your impulse of how vigorously and how rapidly you're being inspired to move. And notice when you receive the impulse to reverse direction. Feeling all 360 degrees of the sacrum, which is an oblong sort of bone above the tailbone and below the lumbar spine. On the next inhale, you could squeeze the kneecaps towards the chest. And you could notice the opening of the lower back, the opening of the shoulder blades as you squeeze the knees towards the chest and the elbows towards the ground. And you could stay here and you could notice how it feels arriving into this situation to simply allow the ankles and feet to play freely, to rotate, to flex and to point as the kneecaps are drawn down and out, out and down towards the floor. And if it's available to you, you might reach for the outer edges of the feet and keep in these bent, going to happy baby. Or you might continue explore, exploring holding the shins, holding the hamstrings. Either way, consider the aspect of kneecaps dissolving out and away from the midline away from the spine and towards the earth. And you might have an impulse to begin rocking a little bit again, left and right in happy baby or in knees to chest. You could see if you have an impulse to do any custom micro movements in Happy Baby Asana, as long as you're keeping the knees bent, you consider having the soles of the feet parallel to the ceiling. And taking the next several breaths to be with the hamstrings and calves the entire posterior aspect of the legs, simply being with those regions of the body as you invite any form of movement into your happy baby, into your knees to chest, into your windshield wipers, any of these supine options are still open to you now. You may also choose to roll back into snail or plow, which is to simply support the sacrum and allow the kneecaps to hang. And if you have a plow practice, you might choose to come through a shoulder stand. Make sure to do this pose only if it's available to you and if you've done it before. But for shoulder stand, you make sure to keep the chin tucked and simply notice your impulse. And wherever you are, the process is the same of noticing the quality of the experience for the backs of the legs, from the hamstrings all the way down to the Achilles tendon. There's absolutely no need in this moment to achieve any 
destination of any kind or any so-called shape. Everybody rolling over to one side. Begin to find yourself approaching a tabletop position. Notice the flow of blood circulation adjusting as the body regulates itself to this different center of gravity. And you may notice yourself having an impulse to cycle through cat and dog. which would mean exhaling, curving the spine inward, the chin and tailbone tuck, inhaling chin and tailbone, reach towards the sky, chest opens, ribs open, exhale, back body opens, just like a cat stretching itself, inhale, solar aspect, the dog, the chin tucks out, the tailbone and sacrum tuck out, the front body opens, exhale, close, but opening the back body. You might also notice the hips wanting to circle. And so following whatever direction, keeping the fingertips strong and the palms under the elbows and the elbows under the shoulders and the knees stacked under the hips, but taking the sacrum and the hips along for the ride and following the impulse of any of these movements which are available to you, cat and dog, hip circles, or perhaps fire hydrant, where the kneecap is bringing back in a circle. And if you're finding yourself moving in a fire hydrant shape, be sure to notice when it's time to reverse direction And be sure to notice when it's time to switch legs. Notice the rapidity and vigor of your movements. consider, am I following my impulse? Coming back to tabletop and exhale, tailbone sits back, spine lengthens, fingertips stretch forward into child pose. integrating in child pose for five more breaths. As we consider the Kripalu formula, breathing, feeling, relaxing, watching, and allowing, and noticing in no place in the Kripalu movement formula is the word doing. Simply breathe, relax, watch, feel, and allow a five word Kripalu yoga mantra of sorts. So if you're in child pose, you could come back up through tabletop as the right kneecap sweeps towards the back of the right palm. See where the hip might like to open. The left kneecap may want to scooch back and you may find yourself in pigeon on one side in some degree, whatever degree of hip opening 
is being called for. And it could be really helpful to place the hands on the blocks here. And it could be really helpful to inhale and look up gently and exhale and look down gently. And wherever you are, noticing the hips and the pelvic bowl and what type of opening in the hip muscles is possible. As you invite dynamic and continuous movement, the real focus is on the sustained and gradual opening of the hip muscles. Maybe not the focus, but the anti-focus. And on the next exhale, you might allow yourself to fall forward, melt forward into a reclining pigeon. You could recline onto some blocks, perhaps supporting this chest with a block. Arranging some props that could feel good. You could put a blanket under the right thigh and glute. Really support yourself or find a degree of flexion that's not too hot, that's not too intense. So really find, if you want less intensity and you don't have any props, you could bring your right heel a little closer to six o'clock on your mat, a little bit closer to the short end of the mat. Again, having a blanket, having a block under the sternum, maybe even under the forehead. You can even take a blanket or a cushion. Or a chest. And simply consider a resting pigeon here. Keeping the right knee bent, the hip in a hip opener, and the left leg extended back. Those are the only essential ingredients. And now relax into your hip opener, almost like you're laying on a massage table. Noticing the rapidity and the vigor of your breathing. And if I had an assistant modeling this for me on the mat, then I would take my hand pan and I would start playing for you in this resting pigeon. By the absence of that, we can push up with hands, gently roll onto the right hip bone, allowing the left foot to come out, sweeping the props away. Come to a wide-legged seated stance. 
You may flop back onto the hands here to support the spine and you might actually pummel the legs against the ground and bending the right knee, the right knee again, bringing the instep of the foot towards the left thigh. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Make sure the sit bones, sit bones are staying grounded into the mat, creating a bit of a figure four shape. And just consider sitting with a nice long spine. Some people find it really helpful to place a block under the tailbone. Really helpful. One might even place the hand on the right knee and the left hand on the hip and invite a gentle spinal twist such that the gaze is fixed six inches ahead of the second toe. And perhaps notice any impulses in the toes and the ankles and the Achilles tendon, inviting those few square inches of chaos few square inches of no control. And then coming, allowing the stillness to pervade again. You might begin to melt forward into Janna Shirshasana, side A. Simply hinging at the hips, torso, core, front body, all aligned to the left foot. And notice the point where your spine and your hips feel complete. At that point, you might bring the arms forward. You might even invite challenge by holding a block and squeezing the block between the palms and sending the block towards the toes so that the center of the block is aligned with the second toe. Gazing down towards the earth, lengthening the spine, and exhale, finding space in the spine, becoming really receptive to the information from the spine, appreciating the irony of the Sanskrit term Janashirshasana because they named it nose to knee pose. In fact, it's all about the right side body and the spine releasing pose. So just notice where your Janu Shasana wants to go today. And play with it. You could really use a strap if your legs are longer. Wherever you are, walking yourself back up to center with the fingertips, releasing any props that you have. You might follow an impulse to do windshield wipers from a seated position. And you might invite in a spinal twist by following the gaze in the opposite direction of the kneecaps. Inhale to center, exhale. Gaze to the right, kneecaps to the left. Inhale through center, gaze to the left, kneecaps to the right. Inhale through center, etc. Massaging the glutes, massaging the sits bones. And 
And as you come to the left, you can allow yourself to come back towards tabletop position here. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. And on the next inhale, slide the left kneecap to meet the back of the left palm. Rotating the hip open, scooching the right kneecap back slightly. Right heel towards three o'clock on the mat. Perhaps using blocks to create more space in your pigeon and oscillating through a micro cobra oscillation in the cervical spine. Looking down on the exhale, gently looking up on the inhale. Notice the rapidity and vigor of your breath. Notice your movement. It's a very sensitive region, the cervical spine and the neck. Whenever level of hip opening is appropriate to you, the back leg is extended long. The left kneecap is ahead of the left pelvis, left side of the pelvis, and the left heel is somewhat aligned towards the right hip bone. And finding a degree of flexion it feels comfortable for you to sustain. It could be a really good idea to slide a cushion under your left glute and your left hamstring. You might even take a blanket and create a little massage table for your upper body. And if you have to come out of the asana to do that, it's totally fine. Wherever you are, make a little, make a little massage table for yourself. And again, you can also invite less hip flexion by bringing the heel closer towards six o'clock on the mat. So that could be a really gentle resting pigeon for people. Or even child pose, modified child pose. would also be acceptable. So resting into this pigeon pose, begin to notice the rapidity and vigor of the breath. Consider how it feels to breathe into the belly. The back of the belly, the lumbar spine. Noticing the sensations as you become aware of your experience in this position. Relaxing into this awareness, watch for sensations so that you can feel them and allow them to transition you into a new state of awareness. And inhale to tend the fingertips, look up, and you could roll the hips back down towards the mat. Coming through seated, you might find yourself having an impulse to do seated windshield wipers supporting the hips with the hands and the spine with the hands by placing them on the mat. 
and rolling the kneecaps back and forth, you might choose to turn the gaze away from the kneecaps for a gentle spinal rotation. Coming through center, extend the right leg long this time. And allow the instep of the left foot to be placed on the inner left thigh. It can be really helpful to sit up onto a block, block under the tailbone. Creating a figure four shape. Notice your impulse to sit with the torso and shoulders aligned towards some degree. And so simply lengthening the spine, you may find that you're oriented towards a certain angle and begin to see how it feels to orient towards the, the second toe or towards the second toe gazing six inches past it, you could begin to see how it feels to hinge towards the toes at the hip level, keeping the spine nice and long for Janna Shirshasana side B. Some modification of this shape You can sustain exactly like this. You could take a strap around the foot, keeping the spine nice and long. You could extend the fingertips and arms and simply find length from both fingertips all the way to the shoulder blades, all the way down to the hip bones on either side, the psoas, P-S-O-A-S bones the psoas bones all the way to the fingertips of both middle fingers creating a circuit there inhaling to lengthen exhale to release inhale to lengthen exhale to release and you can play with your Janu Shirshasana side B in whatever modification feels appropriate to you. Simply sustaining the asana and relaxing into the passive aspects, the so-called passive aspects of Janu Shirshasana, which is spinal lengthening and release. So ignoring the Sanskrit name, nose to knee for the sake of the other aspect of the pose, which is left side body extension, left side body opening and spine opening pose. And again, you can do this with or without a block underneath the seat. Simply ensure that the spine and the left side body are engaged in an inquiry. You're listening to the impulses. For two more breaths.
tenting the fingertips, walking the hands back towards the kneecap, coming back up to seated. You may choose to put the feet out in front of you and generally pummel the legs against the floor to invite circulation. You could actually bring the tailbone on a block, curling the, le the right foot in, and then the left foot onto the right thigh for half lotus, or simply placing the foot down, creating a triangle between the tailbone, the knee, and the other knee. And as you create this triangle between the knee and the knee and the tailbone, this is where a block is really used for a cushion. You are in Sukhasana, easy pose. Or a lotus pose, same thing. You may choose to go for full lotus pose by placing um, both feet on pocket of the hip. Wherever you are bringing the hands to part center and inhale and exhale through the belly. Consider the flow of energy, impulses, information, neurons, brain signals, gut neurons through the belly. The home of the digestive fire or agony. And on the next inhale, you could invite that breath to flow upward from the belly into the ribs and exhaling from the ribs to the belly. Inhaling from belly to ribs, exhaling from ribs to belly. Inhale from belly all the way up to the ribs, filling up the balloon all the way to the top of the ribs and the chest, to the heart chakra, to the energy center of the emotions and exhaling past the ribs the solar plexus, the energy center of the identity, all the way back down to the belly. Inhaling belly, ribs, chest. Exhaling chest, ribs, belly. Inhaling belly, ribs, chest. Exhaling chest ribs, belly, inhaling belly, ribs, chest, exhaling chest, ribs, to belly. Continue this three-part breath, Dirga Pranayam, at your own pace. And we'll simply add a mudra to this pattern. The mudra is basically similar to an asana, but for the hands. So as you inhale, consider unsticking the middle finger, the ring finger and pointer finger away and opening the palms. And as you exhale, bring both of the palms, glue the fingertips back together in front of the heart center for Anjani Mudra. Inhale, opening the hands, fingertips slide away from each other, palms open like a cup, except for the thumb and pinky, lotus mudra. Exhale, palms press gently and slowly back together, Anjani mudra. So we're alternating Dirga Pranayam with Anjani mudra, lotus mudra. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest, Simultaneously opening the Lotus Mudra, begin your exhale, begin to close the Lotus Mudra as the air exits from the chest and the ribs. 
on the belly. Inhale through to the belly. Begin separating the fingers, except for the thumb and pinky, opening up into that lotus shape. And exhaling, fingers come slowly back together into Anjani Mudra. Arriving up full Anjani Mudra at the bottom of your exhale. And now continue at your own pace without me blathering on or narrating it for you. And simply consider the little portals at the tip of each finger. Make sure to elongate the spine. Notice how the lungs feel. In the back of the sacrum, the reverse aspect of the sacrum. I mean, solar plexus. So the middle back, the area between the shoulder blades. And pausing now in Lotus Mudra, pinky and thumb fingers connecting, second, third, and fourth fingers opening, palms cupped open in this Lotus Mudra. We will conclude today's class with the syllable Tam, T-A-M, which is similar to Om, it's the root syllable to, um, which corresponds with Tara, who is one of the aspects of the Buddha, one of the aspects of consciousness overall. So we could do that three times on the next three exhales all together. Whatever seated position is comfortable for you, and whatever lotus position feels right for you. Ta tripod that you've been creating with the knees and the tailbone and the spine. You might invite a gentle circumduction of the skull, bringing the neck circles, noticing the vigor and rapidity of your neck circles. Observing, watch, feel, allow, breathe, and reverse direction when you're ready. And bringing the head to stillness, inviting circumduction of the wrists now, elbows. Come up, wrists are circulating, following the impulse to reverse directions when you're ready. And the hands resting on the clavicles. You could bring the points of the elbows around in a circle. and following your impulse to reverse direction. And 
bringing the hands back down to the knees, palms facing up. Breathing deep into the belly, recalling the thing, the thought, the feeling, the sensation that you may have voiced at the beginning of class. And you can say that thought aloud or in your head as you tap the outer edge of your right palm or your left palm rather with the fingertips. And you bring those taps all around your arms and shoulders and front body. And you can say that thought. I'm feeling you can switch hands. You can tap this point on the outside of the inner palm. And you can simply bring that word all around and see now if it resonates differently in any way, shape, or form than it did before, as you say the name of that thought or feeling or sensation, and the sensation, and the sensation, and the sensation, and the sensation again. And I keep saying the sensation, but you might be saying chest pain chest pain, chest pain. Noticing where do you feel the chest pain? Just one example. Do you feel it in your elbow or your wrist? Inquiring into that, tapping. and bringing the palms back to the knees. You can find yourself rolling over to a laying down position. Yes, into Shavasana or integration. Taking a moment not to simply catch one's breath from some supposed flurry of activity, but rather valuing this opportunity as a moment to digest and process all of the energetic shifts and pieces of movement that were done. So taking these last two to three minutes to become really quiet in the body, mind, and energy with no more narration from me, no more verbal cueing required. Simply being Noticing what we were able to give ourselves permission to enjoy today on the mat.
becoming aware of the breath now. Inviting yourself back into deep presence with the body. Taking all of the sensations and awarenesses of body, mind, and energy that you were able to cultivate today on the mat and trusting and the knowledge that they will be able to serve throughout the rest of the day and in the future. Inviting the breath deep into the belly, wiggling the extremities. You could consider rolling over to one side if you haven't sat up already with knees bent, elbows bent, pushing down onto the mat to curl and roll up to seated so that we can close this asana class, this mat yoga experience with the universal sound of OM on the next exhale all together. Om. Bowing to yourself, bowing to the guru within, bowing to the community, to each of us, those of us who are here live. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, 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 namaste. Those of you who are watching in the future as well. Namaste. Um, this was a little bit of a yin languaging, um, and I'm going to actually try to develop um, yin style of yoga on Friday um, soon. So stay tuned for that. You may be able to enjoy things along these lines from today on a Friday. And on a Tuesday, we could have a little bit more active than what we did today. But either way, there's a deep inquiry and really interesting play and exploring the impulses of our energy bodies and our wellness. So may you be well, may you drink plenty of water and take care and see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye-bye.